I forgot the sandwiches. You're lying. I'm not lying. No, that was your one food job. <laughs> Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Alex, AKA Alex the Vagabond. It's a little bit nippy this morning, 7.23 a.m. So today we have a pretty epic hike, 19.4 kilometers, 750 meter elevation gain. Descent on the other side, we'll be going through an extremely volcanic uh, landscape. As we get through the day, I'll be letting you guys know a bit more about the history of the park, the cultural history, and the significance to the Maori people. And uh, a couple more facts about the hike. It's gonna be a really fun, really long day. sun is just starting to crest over the fog bank behind us and you can see one of the volcanoes in the background I think that's Nagaroi conical shaped volcano but this is insane you can just see like there's this huge fog bank and then uh, the light is just slowly creeping in it's absolutely beautiful we're walking right now through kind of like a tussock sort of just this high alpine scrub and lichen and little bushes, lots of purple flowers. I don't know what they are, but they're beautiful. If you do know what they are, please add that in the comment section. But it's a beautiful morning. It's gonna be a beautiful day. We got into town late last night, so we didn't get to go to a proper grocery store, but we went into a gas station and found a lot of power bars. There's also sandwiches, like already packed sandwiches. So we have those in the backpack. We. I forgot the sandwiches. You're lying. I'm not lying. No, that was your one food job. <laughs> I brought apples. I used to be joking. I'm not joking. Right after I filmed that clip about being over prepared instead of under prepared and all of our sandwiches and. We have all the rest of the food. I forgot the sandwiches. Give me a break. <laughs> Things happen though, and sometimes we do forget things. That is why being overprepared is important because we are overprepared. We didn't only buy the sandwiches, we have lots of other options, so we'll be okay. Over here behind me is Nagaroi. Nagaroi is only around 2,500 years old. It's the youngest volcano of the three. The other two have been around for around 30,000 years. And they're the southernmost mountains or volcanoes in a string of volcanoes that go right up the center of the North Island and end up in the Bay of Plenty. The last eruption took place in 1975. And one of the longest ones was in 1954. 11 months of continuous eruption. So right now we're at the base of Nagaroa. You may recognize it if you're a Lord of the Rings fan. Peter Jackson chose this mountain to be Mount Doom in Mordor. And you can see just like all of the remnants of pyroclastic flows and lava. Volcanoes are some of the most interesting geological features that we have on this planet, we kind of forget that we are sitting atop a giant molten rock core in the middle of you know this planet. So it's cool to see places that are geologically active because it really just shows what is happening on our planet on a larger scale. But right now behind me with the light, the morning light coming down, you can really see how active this volcano is. It's really beautiful. Thank you. 
All right, well, we've made it to Soda Springs. It's about five kilometers in. The real ascent begins now. We're right at the base of Mount Nagaroi. Nagaroi, difficult one to pronounce. Lots of stairs, lots of switchbacks. How are you feeling? I could definitely feel the altitude. I feel good though. I'm not tired, but I can definitely feel it. It makes your breathing a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it just kind of makes you want to kind of like take it steady instead of trekking up super quickly because you can feel it enhance as you climb. All these valleys are essentially just like chutes where pyroclastic flows, gas, rock from eruptions would come pummeling down here. Good luck escaping a pyroclastic flow. I don't know if you've heard of Pompeii, but that was a pyroclastic flow. It essentially just froze everybody in time. Um, but yeah, that's what we're hiking along right now. All of this rock was um, put here in 1975 when the volcano exploded. There's a big cloud of gas, rock, and ash came ripping down the mountainside and made the rough rock that we're walking along now. So now that we're at the top plateau between the two volcanoes, I think it's time to talk a little bit about the uh, mythology behind this place. So these volcanoes are considered tapu or sacred by the Maori people. And there's a really interesting kind of creation myth uh, attached to this place. So back in the day, uh, a high priest called Nagatoro Irangi was in the region and he wanted to claim this high volcanic plateau for his people, the area around Lake Taupo. To get a better lay of the land, he decided to climb to the peak behind me. And when he got to the top, a snowstorm whipped up out of nowhere and being a Pacific Islander, he had never really experienced snow before. So he was worried for his life and he called upon his other high priestesses up in the Bay of Plenty area to send him warmth. They did that, but they did it in a creative way. They sent fire from the ground, essentially a volcanic eruption, which created the crater back here and saved his life and claimed this place for his people. So Tongariro was the first national park in New Zealand. It was made a national park in 1887 when the local chieftain of the Maori tribe uh, essentially realized that the best way to protect this place was to offer it as a gift to the crown uh, and Asked for it to be protected so they did turn it into a national park it was the first one here in New Zealand and it steadily grew in size from that initial gift to encompass almost 800 square kilometers now so this is definitely one of the most popular national parks in New Zealand especially because you can do this beautiful hike in a day but um, Definitely when you come here, be respectful. Remember that this place is tapu, it is sacred still. So pack in whatever you pack out, be respectful. Do not leave trash or you know defecate on the trail um, and just generally be respectful because this is a sacred place. We're at like 1800 meters here, which may not sound like much, but this is one of the highest mountains on the North Island and we made it, epic. 
We just got to the tippy top. I believe this is the highest point that we'll be at on this trek. This view is unreal. The wind is much stronger up here. If you look that way, you can actually see a bunch of people crossing and it's, I don't know, it just looks like such a trek. But now we go downhill from here on out, which will be really nice. This view was worth all of it so far. So. Well, we've made it to the top, just climbed Red Crater Ridge, and we're up here at around 1,800 meters. We have Nakaroi in the background. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm doing my best, um, but it's really beautiful. We're on this ridge line, and on either side, just these huge like volcanic calderas. All of the soil is like this dark, rich red from oxidization of the iron in the soil. And uh, it's just really rad. I mean, there's not too many landscapes like this in Earth where we have this beautiful day, views stretching to the horizon, the clouds over there, this big sea of clouds. And it's been a hike, but definitely, definitely worth it. So right on the other side of the peak, we begin the long, slow, slippery descent down what is essentially just volcanic dust and rock. But um, it's deep and it's slippery. And you need to be really, really careful. And I'm seeing people in like Converse just straight up sliding down this mountain face. And um, just if you come and do this, be prepared because it's no it's no rock in the park. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now around two in the afternoon. So we've been walking since 7.30 a.m. And we're finally on the far side of the crossing. We're descending. We've made it out of like the volcanic plateau area. So we're kind of starting to come back into that tussock. But it's beautiful. We got a view of Lake Taupo out there in the distance. It's cool, you can still see edges of the volcano. Lots of steam off there in the corner and you can still actually smell the sulfur in the air. But, got a couple kilometers in front of us before we make our way down and successfully complete the Tongariro crossing. Got about five kilometers more descending, but we finally made it down to the tree line, and it's pretty cool. We're right on the edge of like this high alpine tussock, and right where the trees and that alpine environment meet, and it's insane. The first trees that you see are these tiny little stunted, almost like pygmy or dwarf uh, trees, and it's just really cool to see. There's like baby ferns, baby trees, uh, because you know up here. It's hard for trees to survive, but the farther down we go, we're going to dip down into this forest and uh, it should be really rad. Oh my goodness, we made it.
Wow, that was a day. That was uh, a very long day. A very awesome day. Tons to see, lots of elevation gain. Um, I looked at my phone actually and boom. So the Tongariro Crossing, 14.9 miles, 33,071 steps, 185 floors climbed. It was a mission. It was really awesome. Um, some of the most unique scenery I've ever seen. Lots of people, but overall it was really awesome. Definitely one of, one of the coolest and hardest day hikes I've ever done in my life. I think um, if you are gonna do the Tongariro Crossing, definitely be prepared. Um, on that note, I'm gonna be doing like kind of a debrief video where I share all of the things that I learned from doing it, um, all the things I think you should have or um, you know be prepared for before undertaking the Tongariro Alpine Crossing. And I'm gonna be doing that over on my personal YouTube channel, Alex the Vagabond. So if you haven't subscribed to that, go ahead and do that. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Please give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, hit that subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. And stay tuned, there's gonna be a couple more videos coming at you from New Zealand, from this trip to New Zealand. And uh, yeah, it's been a fun day. I'm gonna go sit in a hot spring somewhere and then I'm gonna stuff my face with like pasta and have an ice cold beer. Cause I think I earned all of those things. <laughs> Actually, I know I did. Cause the Tongariro Alpine Crossing has been completed and it's time to rest. Peace.